Hello and welcome to Meriwether Living and the Meriwether Knitting Podcast. My name is Gabriella, and I'm so excited to chat with you today about my knitting, my making, and all that I've been up to the last couple of months because it's been quite a while since I sat down to chat in this podcast form. Honestly, it's been quite a while since I've been online at all. I've been so wrapped up in the real world, <laughs> the outside of the internet world, um, that I haven't even really checked in online for a couple of months. And um, today I had a free morning. My two girls are out with their grandparents visiting the museum. It's a beautiful, very, very warm summer's day. And so I have the window open. I hope that there isn't too much noise from the streets and the birds and all of those things. But I thought I'd just sit and chat with you because it's been a while and I have lots of things I want to talk to you about. I've been so inspired in my making in different realms and different areas in my knitting, but also in other areas. I think that's often the case in the summertime that we kind of, a lot of us, kind of venture out into new territory too when the warm weather hits or, you know, sometimes when it's really hot, even put the knitting down altogether because here in Germany where I live, air conditioning is hard to come by. We definitely don't have an air conditioning air conditioned apartment. Um, I don't know anyone who has an air conditioned home or apartment. Although I did recently go on a walk and saw a house. I saw a house with an air conditioner outside very clearly as, um, yeah, I grew up in the Midwest. Well, I didn't really grow up there, but I spent quite a few years of my teenage time in the Midwest and where we lived, it got super, super cold in the summer and super hot, brutally warm in the, in the summertime. And so definitely air conditioning was a big thing where I lived. And so I know how they look and I recognized it and I kind of was amazed by it because when it gets really hot here, I do miss it. I will admit that, I really do. And it's great to acclimate and to power through, but oh, it's nice that today it's gone down a couple of degrees, even though it's still very warm. But anyway, I'm just so happy to be here with you and I'm so glad that you're here with me. If you're new here, welcome, it's so lovely to have you. I am a knitter, a handcrafter, an artist of all kinds, living in Germany with my um, husband and my two daughters. My husband's German and our little cat Sagwa, who's wandering around here. He's now on the balcony enjoying a bit of shade and fresh air. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm so glad to be here. I will talk about first where I've been for a while. Before I get into talking about the hand making, I have a delicious iced licorice mint tea with some fresh peppermint from our little balcony garden. It's really just, you know, a few planters that I put in the balcony and, you know, little pots I have out there, but I call it our balcony garden because I just see it as my little oasis in my little garden. And I love licorice mint tea iced. I'm a huge fan. It's so good. Licorice and tea I always love, but there's something about it iced in the summertime, which is just heavenly. So, um, anyway, where have I been? I'll just chat about it. And as I said, or I was going to say, I'm going to put chapters in this video. So if you'd like to skip ahead to any of the making or any of the other things I'm going to talk about in this episode, you can do that anytime. Um, I think I'm just going to hop around a lot and just talk to you really casually because we haven't caught up in such a long time. So yeah, please tell me also what you've been making, what you've been doing. If this has been a time of a lot of knitting for you or other kinds of making, I'd love to hear about it. So, you know, it was, I had gone through a bit of a rough, rough patch in May and June and um, that process, if you follow my newsletter, you know what I'm talking about, was a bit tough. We went through a little mourning process as a family and um, it still continues. I think for life it continues, these processes, but, um, Summer has been a huge gift and a huge blessing. And spontaneously, I think at the end of June, I'm not sure um, exactly when now, time is kind of like jumbled up. But I think at the end of June, um, we went on a very spontaneous trip to the North Sea with um, my husband and his parents and our girls and just had an amazing week on the island of Sylt, which is just a little kind of island up in the North Sea of Germany and enjoyed just a wonderful time. Enjoyed the sea, enjoyed the fresh air, enjoyed just being outdoors and playing, and it was actually really lovely weather. North, the North Sea is always kind of hit or miss if you can really swim in the sea or not in the summertime even. Sometimes it's cool and rainy and, um, you know, sometimes it's really warm and 
we love the rain and the wind and the cold air. In fact, we love going to the North Sea in the winter time even, and in the early springtime and really getting that cold, fresh air and going on long walks and just enjoying that. We love that, so we don't mind anyway, but we had great weather and we could even swim in the sea and it was just wonderful. So that was a huge gift and a real reset and um, Nick's parents took the girls a few afternoons and even one evening and um, he and I could just have time together which was really special and yeah, when you have little children sometimes those moments of one-on-one -on -one time going somewhere are you know harder to come by or a bit less frequent um, for, at least for us so it was really really special we really enjoyed it and it was just a wonderful time of being together and then we came back um, it was July and July is a busy month for us, usually because we have two little family birthdays in July, actually more when we go into our little extended family, but in our little family of four, both Nick and my daughter Vivian have July birthdays, and so birthdays are just a really special time of kind of preparation and celebration and ritual, and um, we really got to just enjoy those moments. Um, and then later on in the month, my mother came to visit my mama. She came to visit me from all the way from America. Oh, it was so special. I haven't, I hadn't seen her in person. You know, we talk on the phone and on video chat all the time, um, but I hadn't seen her in person for a year and over a year then. And so to be able to be with her in person and she came for a week and it was just absolutely like special. And I was pretty much completely checked out of the rest of the world for that time that she was here. I just was with her and focused with her and she's just such an inspirational person to me and she's a, an artist of her own writing. I mean, she's just a painter and a, a hu an amazing artist. And so she came and we worked on different things together and um, she is also like so good with plants and she's so good in the garden. She's a gorgeous garden back home in the States. Um, but she came and just helped me with my house plants because I had this giant, giant monstera plant, which had grown like wild the last two years. I hadn't, um, I am looking for the English word. <laughs> I hadn't like separated the plant and planted it in new pots, repotted it, repotted it for that whole time and so it was in a pot that was a bit too small for it really it was growing and constantly giving out new leaves but it was really big and also for our little space here it was kind of impractical because whenever we would have people over and want to sit around you know this plant was kind of in the way and i think it looks gorgeous but it was just a little awkward and impractical so my mom helped me and she just helped me repot it and find new places for it now there's on each side, I have two bookshelves here. You see one back here, but on the other side, there's a little door to the living room, and then the other side, there's also a bookshelf. And on both sides, she put one at the top and put, there's one here on the bottom, and there's just, there's so many now, and it's so special and wonderful to have it kind of spread out. And I, I love having plants in our space. It's just such a wonderful thing. I love the fresh air. I just love the life in the room. And at this time of year, it just feels like a continuation of nature in, indoors and outdoors, which I love. But in the winter, I especially find it so soothing to have a bit of green inside because um, winter can be hard for me in that way. So I was very thankful for her help with that. And I just loved, loved being with her. And uh, yeah, then she departed and it was so hard to say goodbye to her. It always is. But it was really also a very happy moment to say goodbye because I was just so grateful. We were all just so grateful to have had her here and my girls love her and they have such a sweet bond with her and um, you know, it's so hard when family, close family, like that lives so far away but I think that those times of really intense and intentional, you know, a week of intentional time together is a, hu is a huge gift and is a huge dose of like bonding and just special moments and so we really made the most of it and um yeah that's that has just been a couple weeks ago and now just kind of settling into life this month is just every time time is flying by it feels like we have lots of things nick was out of town he was in berlin for a few days and yeah it's just been whirlwind but i'm so glad to be here now and um i skipped over intentionally a big thing because it's the first thing i think i want to talk to you about today beyond what I've been up to. Um, and that is 
the Castle Wool Festival, which is a wool fest, a wool, yeah, a wool festival. I don't know, you know, um, a wool. I don't know what what do we call it again? It's a wool festival, a yarn festival. Um, in very close to where I live, um, in the city of Kassel, and um, it's just a really, a really special celebration. This is the second year that it took place, and I got to go this year, and I got to meet up with a really special knitting friend, podcast friend, who I had never met up with in real life before, and we met for the first time, and it was just so special. It was my dear friend, Hannah, of Herb Garden Knitwear, you have to check out her podcast and her gorgeous designs if you haven't yet. She did an amazing giveaway for the Botanical Knit Along, Make Along, <laughs> Botanical Make Along, just, yeah, a few months ago in May. And um, she's just incredible and so lovely and a really prolific designer. I'm always amazed by her designs and how much she makes. And I talked to her about it and it was just so fun and inspiring to be in conversation with her. So anyway, the festival took place, I think, early in July, I think one of the first weekends in July, and um, she and I decided we would meet up the year before she had been there and I had been there, we had missed each other and gotten in touch afterwards and talked about it and we're like, oh, we have to meet up next year and so this year we decided to really make it happen and I'm just so glad we did. It was like, honestly, meeting Hannah was like meeting an old friend who I had known for years and years. And we talked about it and I think we have known each other for a few years, like in on podcasts, on Instagram, kind of in the knitting realm, I think since 2020 even. I was thinking about it because I test knit for her in 2020, I think, and so it was the first time that we had really kind of chatted. But um, so like four years of, of knowing each other from afar, but it felt like, you know, we never talked in real life and that's so natural, like just like chatting with a friend and oh, it was just so much fun to go with her through the festival, look at all the stands, look at everything that was offered, chat about yarn, chat about knitting, chat about life. We went, there was this gorgeous little park attached to the venue where the festival was held and we just went in there and sat and chat and knit. And then we would like go back in and we got lunch together. She treated me to lunch, which was so sweet. And we just had a wonderful, wonderful time together. And um, I want to go visit her at some point. She said, come and visit me sometime. And I'm like, oh, I want to so bad. So one day I hope to go and visit her too. But yeah, I, we were like, the latest is next year at the festival that we have to meet up again because it was just such a joy and a treat to chat and to be, to connect there. Um, yeah, she's just a real treasure. And so, Hannah, it was so lovely to meet you. And at the festival, we did a lot of looking and a lot of browsing. And yeah, it's interesting because Hannah had told me about different festivals she had been to or different yeah yarn fests that she had gone to, um, even in different countries. She had been to one in Spain and was telling me about all the different yarns that she finds. And we were noticing at this festival, there were a lot of hand-dyed yarns, yarn, a lot of, there was a lot of like, very bright, vibrant hand-dyed yarn, and um, there was less kind of, um, yeah, kind of like other things. I mean, there was some fiber. There was one stand that has some gorgeous, um, like Norwegian and Swedish and Icelandic yarn, just gorgeous, beautiful. So they just Scandinavian yarn, and they had some beautiful things. They didn't have a huge color selection. There was also some Scottish yarn, but there wasn't a huge selection there. It was a pretty small. There was a huge selection of just hand dyed yarn, um, and then there were a couple other little things here and there. There were some fleeces that we saw, and touched, and were amazed by the beautiful fluffiness. And there was, yeah, there were a couple of things. But there was a place that I knew from the beginning I wanted to go to, a stand specifically, that I knew I need to go there and I want to find yarn there because last year I had been there and I had purchased yarn and I just loved it. So it was this beautiful natural dyer, natural botanical dyer, um, who I had, who's called Rübenzahl Spinnereien and it's naturally dyed wool and yarn. And I had gotten last year some gorgeous bright green skeins there and have knit mittens with it. And just, I just love that yarn. And so I knew I wanted to get some more yarn from there. And so I did, I kept, we walked around a few times and I thought about what I wanted and I ended up choosing something and I'm very happy with what I chose. Um, but there was also another place that I ended up finding another stand 
on the way later on in the day where we came across some gorgeous unspun yarn that was from a really small, I don't even know, spinner yarn like company woman. I think it's just a woman who runs it and online there isn't much about her, but I found it and I thought it was so beautiful. I fell in love with it. And Hannah was with me as I kind of really debated if I would get that hand spun yarn or not. I'll put a picture in of me in the yarn because she took a picture of me so I could see how the colorway looked with me, my skin. And I was like, I would love to knit a garment with this, but I didn't feel like the colorway really would suit me. And that is something which is always a struggle, but I realized over time, I really have to be careful because it's such a shame if I knit something and I just don't like the colorways on me. And I, I think it's like such a shame to put an effort into something where it just doesn't suit me and to dye it afterwards. I don't really have a desire to do that very often. So I need to make sure I love the colors, not only while I knit them, but also that I would wear them um, in some kind of context. Um, and I thought this was just a shade off for me as far as garments go. Honestly, looking back, I kind of still regret not getting it because I feel like I should have just knit a shawl with it. It would have been a beautiful shawl and this yarn was so beautiful. I, it really is some regret that I have, but not really, I, I, it's okay. It was also so affordable. It was like beautiful, gorgeous, this amazing plate, um, but I didn't get it. So it is what it is. Maybe next year I'll find something like that. I don't know. Maybe it was a once in a lifetime opportunity that I just lost, but you know, I can't control that now. But I'll show you the yarn I did get at the hand, the naturally dying, naturally, natural dying, naturally dyed stand. You know what I mean? Um, this is it here. These are three skeins. Oh, they're so lovely. Okay, this episode is going to be an episode about of, of sunshine golden shades of all kinds because everything I have here to show you, I have some natural dyeing to show you, is all very golden and um, I think I'm just drawn to those shades and love them. So this is the golden shade I'm talking about that I took first. I took this skein. Um, this is pretty heavy fingering. I think it's more DK really because it's 320 meters per 100 grams. So it's more DK weight yarn and it's this gold, gorgeous, gorgeous golden tone this kind of daffodil shade. And um, I feel like when you're naturally dying, anything, um, the first shade that I think is pretty, I don't want to say easy to get, but I think you can really get, which I have a lot of naturally dyed garments here, which are this shade, is yellow, or shades of yellow, shades of gold. Beyond that, you have to find specific things. I feel like with, you can make this shade with lots of very accessible pieces and it's very hardy, it lasts, the sun, and so I knew I could have even dyed this myself. I had thought about that. I was like, I could dye a yellow skein myself, but I loved the way this yarn felt. Um, it is, yeah, Norwegian wool, 100% wool, um, of course, non-superwash, and it's just, I just loved it, and I loved the shades, and I just thought it would be so beautiful, so I got it, because I love it, and why not? I mean, it's just beautiful, and I haven't hand dyed or naturally dyed wool yet so that would be an experiment of its own anyway and it's such a funny thing to say I could do it myself it's such a silly thing but because I love natural dyeing I do have a desire one day maybe to try um, to venture into naturally dyeing wool and yarn too but I haven't just gotten there and I I don't know I don't see that right now on my horizon but one day it will be there one day I'll do it and um, yeah but I thought this is just gorgeous and I I want and the reason I got it is because it paired so beautifully also this shade that I got two skeins of. It's the same yarn, this Norwegian wool, um, DK weight, and it's just a beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous green. Um, it's just this very kind of pistachio. I feel like it's a really true pistachio in real life green. It's got this gorgeous rich undertone, and um, it's a beautiful color, and I thought this tonal combination would be beautiful with this yellow, and so I'm hoping to do maybe a vest with this yarn here. What kind of vest? I don't know. Honestly, I think it's going to be a bifurca vest again because I love my bifurca vest that I knit last year in the winter time. I wear it, or I wore, when it's not super hot out, I wear it all the time. I love wearing it. I think it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. And the process is beautiful. And of course, it's a botanical knit for the botanical make-along too, which is just, you know, the make-along that I'm hosting along with my dear friend Ashley of Paper Crane Yarns right now for this whole year until next May. And um, yeah, it's just, she's one of a kind, she's incredible, and it's such an honor to host a make-along with her. And um, 
Yeah, I'm glad it's a year-long make-along. I've been so absent from the online world really the last couple of months, so I kind of feel awful about that in a way because I'm like, oh, I need to be present, but I, I know that everyone's making in their own, at their own pace, and um, it's fun to check in on the Discord too. Even there, I had been absent for a while, but I just love the Discord group for the botanical make-along because there are so many beautiful makes, so many beautiful um, projects and colorways and inspiration. I don't know, whenever I see things on there, I'm like, I want to make that, and I, I have now so many things that I want to make, and then I just continue on with my little projects, but they're on the list for someday. Anyway, this is the colorways, this is the yarn that I got there at the beautiful Castle of Boy Festival, and I... My camera died, so it interrupted me, and in case anything's changed, that's why. Um, but, um, yeah, I just am so excited to knit this up, and... Then again next year, go back and maybe get some more yarn from the stand because I'm just somehow loyal. But I don't know, maybe I'll find something new next year too. I just love it. I love it, love it, love it. And so speaking of natural dyeing in the botanical make-along, I think before I continue on showing you my knitting and other projects, I think I'll show you what I've been making in the realm of the botanical make-along. Um, and that is some natural dyeing that I've been doing and I've just been loving I have a huge stack because I've done a lot of it. Um, I did a big kind of burst of stuff. So I'll try to show it to you quickly. But there are basically three batches or four batches that I did. You know, first I prepped the fiber. This is all cellulose, plant-based fiber, linen and cotton. Just old clothing that I had. Old pieces of, yeah, old shirts, old baby onesies, old pants, all these different things that were white. And I prepped them. And I prepped them by first dipping them into a tannin bath of oat gall. I'm just saying the details in case anyone wants to know. I'll say it quickly. An oat gall bath. I, and then I did, you know, I left them for overnight. Then the next day or after that, I put them into an alum bath and prepped them that way to mordant them. And then they were ready for me and I dyed them. And I did three kind of batches. One was pomegranate skins, which I've done before and just have loved the results of. So I did some pomegranate skins. I did onion skins, which was the first time I've ever done onion skins and I loved it. I wanted more of this colorway. And this is why I'm saying this is a thousand shades of gold. Oh, a thousand shades of sunshine because that's what I wanted and that's what I got through the onion skins. It was so beautiful. And it was mostly yellow, but also some, some um, yeah, red onion in there too. It was kind of, I didn't measure anything. I just threw them all in. I'd been collecting them for a year, a year or more. And I did all that I'd collected, a huge bag full, all in the pot. Um, and yeah, what else did I do? Then I did, the last one I did was avocado skins and seeds. And um, I've done that before a little bit with silk, but never with cellulose fiber. And I love the results with that too. So I think I'll just start a little bit with, okay, this top here. This turned out different than I expected it to because this is, was first dyed with um, the pomegranate skins and it was a pale yellow and then I wanted to modify it with iron which I did using old nails, rusty nails that I soak and keep for a long time in water so that they just get the rust in the water. I've done that before, I've shared it on this channel on a vlog I made last year which just had, it was the most cool result ever. I love it, I made a jumpsuit and it turned gray, dark, dark gray, like olive green gray, the most beautiful color. And I wear that jumpsuit constantly. It's one of my most wear worn pieces. I had hand sewn that jumpsuit for myself, made the pattern myself, and then dyed it. And I just love it so much. But this didn't turn dark gray. It was, I guess maybe the, the either the dye wasn't enough, the, it wasn't dyed enough, um, or I didn't, I did something wrong with the iron. I did the same thing I did before, almost. But... It didn't give me a dark color, but I still like this yellow. I think it's a beautiful shade. And I think, especially with black, I like wearing a black turtleneck or a black kind of dress. I think it will look good over that and just fun. So it's just a nice kind of shirt. I feel like it's kind of in my mind like an artist's smock. I love to wear it if I'm painting or working over something black. And um, yeah, that's the first piece. I wanna go through quickly because I have so many things. Um, and then I did, these were also some little, um, little onesies that I did in that I had left over from my girls did in pomegranate skins and um, I don't remember if I iron dipped them or not I think I didn't dip this one and I maybe dipped this one um, but this one I also like just did a little quick with a pansy 
I did a little tiny like what is it called? I hammered the flower on there to try to do a kind of print and it didn't work that well. <laughs> but there's a little tiny faint bluish green circle, which I think is so cute still. And and also look at the unevenness here. I love that. I think it's so cute um, and fun. And this one is very, un very, very even. And these have been jumbled up in my closet. So that's why they look so untidy. But yeah, that's the pomegranate. Okay, then I went on. Oh, here's one more. Oh, no, this is not it. This is, these are some things um, that I did with, um, what do you call it? Avocado. Now, my mom was here, and I wanted to send her home with things. So I dyed more onesies. I dyed more tops. I dyed t-shirts for my brother and my brother-in-law, and I um, sent them away. And I tried to send them the best things because I... You know, things turn out differently, so I didn't send everything with them. But the, um, I don't know if this is actually from the, un from the un uh, pomegranate or from the avocado, but this one I also dyed, which has this funny little bear on it, or little animal, and I thought it was just cute. I don't really like the colorway. Probably I'm going to re-dye it at some point, just because I don't like how it turned out. But that was the first one. But then I did these avocado skin ones, and I had done more. I did a couple of t-shirts. And I modified one with iron, which gave it a very dusty lilac color, which was gorgeous. I loved it. And this is how the pomegranate skins result looked on cotton, just done. A very peachy nude kind of tone, a very like peachy neutral apricot, um, which is very cute and lovely and would be fun paired with all kinds of little bottoms for a baby, you know, little different things. I think it's pretty neutral too, but I love the apricot color. I love this beautiful avocado skin colorway and it's not very brown. It's really uh, it's really peachy apricot-y and I just loved how it turned out. And so, <laughs> just going so quickly through, but I don't I don't want to linger because I feel like this isn't there's not that much to show. Um okay. I also did this one with avocado skins and I kind of try to muddle it up on there so it would get kind of just these textural pieces I don't know it's all it's all wrinkled so you can hardly tell but it has just a textural look and I think this looks so cute too for a little baby um and then now moving on to the onion skins oh the onion skins my favorite some of these things have been washed heavily now and worn and washed because um even if it's just been a couple of weeks that since I've made them I have just loved wearing them this summer. So this is the first thing. This little beautiful baby onesie. Look how cute this is. And I did a little print here of a flower too, which is so cute. I just love how it looks. And I tried to kind of wrap this up with some real pieces of skin so it would give this kind of, kind of uh, almost like tie-dye kind of a look to it. You know, this like just fun you know, variation of color on here. And I just love how this turned out. This is gorgeous. And there were some other cute ones that I made that I sent with my mom back to my sister who's going to have a baby. But um, yeah, I love that one. And here's a little onesie, like a little one piece that I did too in a beautiful bright gold. I mean, look at that color, that golden sunshine color. I think it's so beautiful. It's just gorgeous and so adorable and absolutely neutral. So like, you know, you could, a little baby boy or a baby girl could wear this. I also think it would be so cute to embroider something on there. It's just an adorable, adorable little piece. I love it and I love the color. And then I had this dress that had been a favorite summertime dress of mine for years and years and years. It's a vintage 1970s dress that I got really like, I don't know how many years ago now, maybe like 2018, so it's been a long time and I have worn it constantly in the summer times but it was white and it was looking pretty gnarly and really getting a little almost transparent in places because I've washed and worn it so much so I thought now is the time to give it a new life with some color and so I did I dyed it and I I'm sorry everything is really wrinkly but it is what it is I dyed it with onion skins and I couldn't be happier with the results I've loved wearing this I've loved wearing this just on really warm days with like a little like dark red lipstick and some like earrings and it's just such a beautiful sunny beautiful look and it has 
this gorgeous little lace around the neckline and the sleeves and up the, on the hem too. And I love the way that this lace looks dyed. I think it's gorgeous in this golden color and oh, I just couldn't be happier with how this turned out. It's one of the highlights of this project, this whole natural dyeing project and process. Um, another thing that I've dyed, that I dyed that I really love is this shirt, which I have also worn a lot. It's long sleeve, so I've worn it more in the winter time, just with jeans, and it was white, and it was cute, because I just love the cut. It has a unique cut, I'll show you. But um, I thought it also needed a new life. So as you see, the neckline is kind of a unique neckline. It's kind of like asymmetrical, and I just love how that looks. I think it's a little bit of interest, you know, when you wear some jeans with the top, but I think this colorway with the golden golden beautiful onion skin color has given it really new life and I oh, can't wait to wear this in the autumn. I think it's going to be beautiful with a jacket or a sweater, a hand sweater on top. Oh, I just love it. And the last piece that I have to show you is a pair of pants that were white linen pants. Some of my most worn, like one of my most worn summer garments, they are just gorgeous 100% linen pants. but. I felt like they were getting a little bit see-through on the bum, which I did, of course, not want. So I wasn't wearing them very often because I would have to like wear something over over top of it. And so I thought it's time to dye them to give them a darker color or a different color. And I've worn them now so much they're already faded. And maybe I'm going to dip them one one day again in the dye bath to give them another like level layer of of color. But this is them. They're just beautiful loose pants. Let me zip them up so you can see. And, oh, I love them so much. Now they're not see-through, and I can just wear them. I love wearing them with, like, a black tank top or, like, a little black t-shirt and just keeping it kind of simple. And it's perfect for warm summer days because they're just so flowy and the linen is so breathable and lovely. And when they're not so wrinkly, they're very chic. In fact, I like to wear them wrinkled, too. I love wearing wrinkled linen. I think it's so elegant and just beautiful. I love the texture of linen because it wrinkles actually too. So sometimes I'll iron a little bit, but I'm not really, I don't really want crisp linen on me in my clothes. I like the kind of lived in live in linen vibe. Um, but yeah, those are my natural dyeing projects. Also for the botanical make along and I have just loved them and I'm so happy to have those pieces now in my wardrobe and to gift or to use in different ways. Um, they're just so special. So yeah, that, that has been a huge part of my creative life lately. You know, as far as making with fiber and textiles go, those have been big pro processes and exciting projects for me. Um, I've also been working, you know, on my rusty cardigan, but the progress there isn't so much that I'll show you. I'll show you the rusty cardigan, what that looks like, but I haven't knit a ton. I knit um, with Hannah when we were at the Castle of Wool Festival, I had brought that a sleeve with me and done a lot of work on that sleeve and continued on that sleeve, but honestly I haven't even really made it to the second sleeve yet, so it's just a slow process and it is, I'm knitting that with Plotulopi, which is unspun yarn, and it's very warm and rustic, and I just don't really feel like sitting with a warm rustic piece at the moment in this heat, but I'm excited to return to it and I love that it's progressing and I just love the colorway. I love how it's turning out and I can't wait to wear it then when it's finally finished too. But and I've, I've learned that I really do enjoy the process of knitting with unspun yarn. It's become very natural for me. I think the beginning part of the process was a little bit, you know, tricky. The first, I would say, a couple of hours knitting were like, okay, how do I make sure the yarn doesn't break? How do I find my tension? But I found it pretty quickly and I hold the yarn a, different, a little bit differently some lovely ladies from the um, Botanical Make-Along Discord. We had a little video chat call at the beginning of the make-along and they gave me some amazing advice, which helped me so much. But um, yeah, that project is still there. And then the other main project I've been working on very slowly, I feel like this is taking me forever, but it is a slow project and I it's honestly my primary project that I'm knitting on right now when I knit. I sit down and I work on my Agnita cardigan um, it's sitting right here because it always sits here unless I move it. I literally, if I'm ever watching TV in the evening or if I go on the balcony at any time during the day or if I come in here, I'm always with this, I take this project with me and this is just a gorgeous, gorgeous project and I know this is one, oh, I'm going to wear so much and I really am enjoying the process too, so I'm trying not to like 
be like, oh, it should take me faster because I really love the process of knitting it. And it's one of my only projects right now. And I guess I'm just kind of in a life moment where um, knitting has a different pace. You know, I'm always a slow knitter as we talk about, but I definitely think that there's sometimes where, you know, knitting, just I have a different pace of knitting and this is a bit of a slower time and I am just taking that as it is and enjoying that. This is the agony to, oh, it's so beautiful. This is the back of the cardigan. I've now knit two buttonholes and there are four. So you hear, I'm like, you know, making it through the body slowly, but oh, it's so lovely. This colorway is just a pleasure to look at, to knit with, and I know to wear. It will be a pleasure to wear. Um, the main colorway is this beautiful one. It's Aura from Paper Crane Yarns from Ashley. And I think of all the, all the like, I mean, I love hand dyed yarn. I love all kinds of hand dyers, but I think Ashley just has a real gift with colors that speak to me that are just have this nuance and this interest and yet can have like a kind of like toned downness too. There's not like this is just such a beautiful, rich, multi dimensional colorway with beautiful speckles. It's so fun and joyful. Um, but it would, it just is also very like soft and feminine and that's also something that's hard for me to find with my skin tone is something that fits those kind of categories and I'm really drawn to soft tones to lighter tones to peachy tones honestly my very favorite color is like coral peach pink one of my very favorite colors um, I also love green but um this is since I was a little girl this has been my favorite color so this is really like I'm knitting with my very favorite colorway ever when I knit with this and I've always just loved her colorway aura so um and it's named after her daughter which is so so special i remember when she first released it and i saw it on instagram and yeah i just absolutely love it and so i'm knitting that and i'm holding it double with um filco lanatilia mohair in the colorway flamingo which brings out it's actually brings out certain colorways that are colors that are in here too to a perfect match and i think it just looks very seamless but it also doesn't overpower the beautiful nuance of aura and kind of allows these beautiful little speckles to come through and oh it just has so much dimension and so much texture it's so beautiful and then I'm doing the border here the kind of like there's a double knitting around the neck and then down the button band I'm doing that um, in Phil Galana's Arweta which is or Arweta I think is how you say it I don't know I'm thinking the German pronunciation is probably still wrong um, but in in Flamingo as well and that's kind of just a perfect match to the mohair and it just kind of gives this little edge so that I want to make sure that I have enough yarn for the body in Ara and I wasn't sure if like brioche eats a lot of yarn if you need more I think you need a little bit more yardage than a usual cardigan so I just have that as kind of to save me yardage wise and um, I'm loving how it's looking but of course having to do that intarsia kind of thing that switching over of colors for each button band and then going it also takes more time to brioche for me is very rhythmic and a very much like now meditative process but it's also not as fast as you know stockinette would be for me either so it, it's a slow knit but honestly it's one that i feel like for me it's really a process knit as well as product knit because i can't wait to wear it but yeah, I already have all these like outfit ideas in my mind of what I'll wear this with. And sometimes if I like, you know, I just look at my closet or I think of different things, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to wear that with this cardigan because I know it's gonna like just look so lovely. And I, I love this process. So yeah, I've shown this project many, many times in this podcast and probably this won't be the last time, but I just love it so much. And it's my main knit right now. It just continues to be. And it's always a gift to knit with this yarn that, Ashley gifted to me because I think of her and I just adore her and she's just such a special friend from you know the knitting world and she's just so lovely and so it's also really special to just use that yarn that she gifted me as well but anyway those are my main knitting projects and um other than that I'll show you what I've been working on there's one more textile kind of based project which is some embroidery and this isn't very big at all but I'll show it to you because I think I mentioned it last time and this is a um embroidery piece that I'm making for our front house, for our front, the front entrance of our apartment. Um, I have a little painting, or it's not really a painting, it's more of a collage multimedia piece that I made um, a year or two ago, and it's there in the front as you enter. We have this like little kind of entrance 
foyer hallway and I have this artwork that I made hanging up and it's really black and white and cream and um, kind of a little bit moody and I thought it would be fun to have an embroidered piece at the top. So I thought of this, I came up with this myself and it's from the Latin Vulgate. It's John 1 and I am just embroidering the words kind of freehand. I want it to look kind of rustic, kind of gothic, a little like edgy in a way, but it's, you know, these beautiful words from the Latin Vulgate, John um, verse 1, 1, which I think is very meaningful and powerful and talks about in the Greek, it's the logos, but this is the Latin, of course. So um, yeah, I've begun and you can kind of see the vibe that's going to be happening here and I can't wait to complete it. I'm going to not only do the words, but I think I'm going to add some embellishment of some sort, maybe in red, and just kind of make it this beautiful moody piece. And it's been fun to think of it, to design it myself, to come up with it, and then just to freehand embroider it. I've loved that. I've loved it so much. Um, it's just been so special. And then, yeah, beyond the textile world, beyond dyeing and knitting and embroidering, I have been thinking about and doing other things as well. <laughs> I have loved painting little cards and things. I haven't done any big pieces lately, but um, it's been fun to paint. I, I love to paint. Um, and I've rediscovered a little bit recently. I just did a couple of little cards with watercolor and hadn't done watercolor in so long and I just loved it. It was so much fun and um, yeah, I really loved it. I often paint with other other paint mediums. And so that was just a real treat to do that a little bit and something I, I enjoy a lot. We've been outdoors a lot, spending a lot of time just in nature or at the park when the weather's nice. We And when it's really hot, we like to go to the swimming pool and just get cool there. And um, yeah, I've been bringing a book. Honestly, I've been reading a lot more this summer than I have been reading the last year probably and I when we were you know on the North Sea I brought a book mostly I just read I brought knitting as well but I mostly just read and read when I had little moments to myself um, and I've loved it I've loved reading it I've read um, The Blythes Are Quoted by L.M. Montgomery which was a recently released short story collection of hers that all have to do with Anne and Will and Wilbur <laughs> Anne and Gilbert I also have read some E.B. White with my girls, so that's where Wilbur comes from, but um, L.M. Montgomery, Lucy Maud Montgomery, is the writer who wrote Anne of Green Gables, which is my, probably my all-time favorite book, honestly, at the moment, or my favorite series. Honestly, she shaped me as a person from my early childhood when I first read um, Anne of Green Gables on, and this last year, the beginning of the year, I listened to all of the Anna Green Gables books, the original ones, I listened to six of them, um, on LibriVox, which is a free audiobook website where you can download or just listen to. There's an app where you can just listen to or download audiobooks that are classics. They're in the public domain, so they're free, and people volunteer to just record the audiobooks. And there was an amazing, amazing reader of the Anna Green Gables books. Um, Karen Savage was her name, is her name, and she was just a perfect reader for the books. It was literally like Anne's voice to me. And so at the beginning of the year, my favorite thing to do was to sit and knit and listen to these books narrated by Karen Savage. And I listened all the way from Anne of Green Gables all the way to the last book, Rilla of Ingleside. And I am just, I, I wanna read, the, listen to them again. I've listened to a couple other audiobooks since then, I'm like, oh, I want to go back and start over because they were so good and just so wonderful and, um, yeah, just beautiful. And I think my favorite books from the series, if you want to know, Anne of Green Gables is amazing, of course, but I think Anne of the Island, Anne's House of Dreams, and Rilla of Ingleside are my very favorite books. I do love Rainbow Valley too, but I love them all, okay, but I <laughs> named like five of them, but, um, I just love them so much and so if you're interested or if you need a good audiobook please go listen to that series because they're just so good and go beyond Anne of Green Gables go beyond Anne of Avonlea is also really good but I feel like Anne of the Island and onward there's just so much treasure to be found and to watch these characters through their entire life is just such a special and amazing thing so anyway 
I don't know why I got there, but I just love, love those books. And um, anyway, when I was in the North Sea, I was reading The Odyssey, which is so good and so wonderful. And I um, have been reading now, as far as books like novels go, now I'm reading Middlemarch, which I have in this gorgeous Everyman's Classic hardback, so it's going to be an heirloom for me. It's secondhand, honestly. It's not even firsthand, but it's they're so beautiful, these Everyman Classics editions of books, that if you want some books to have as heirlooms, to have for a lifetime, to have beautifully displayed on the shelf, Highly recommend Every Man's Classic Books, um, Every Man's Library. I love it. So I have Middle March now, and I am making my way through. I think I'm about almost a quarter of a way through. This book is so good. I can't believe it. It's by George Eliot, Middle March by George Eliot. I think this is a new favorite for me already. So I'm just, honestly, when it's warm and, and sunny, I'm literally going out there and reading, or I'm sitting indoors in the the cool and I'm reading this book because I just love it so much. It's so good and it's so good and long and so I have a lot to enjoy. And if you haven't read Middlemarch, you must. I also think um, at this stage in my life as a woman, like a, a, a full woman, not like a young girl, not like a teenager, not a young woman, but like, you know, I feel like I'm a full woman. I've had some experience in my life. It's so funny to say that. But I've had experiences in my life now, you know, where I feel like Girlhood is, is, I've left girlhood long ago in a way. Of course, the girl is always in me. And when I read End of Green Gables, I think the girl lives within us forever. But I definitely feel like womanhood is more, more where I'm at, if that makes sense to you. And I feel like Middle March just speaks to me in a way that it never would have before in my life, before coming to this point um, of just different like experiences that we have as we age and we grow and um, I can imagine it becoming more and more rich throughout my life um, as well as all good books, good literature does. It just continues to get better with age. Um, Anne of Green Gables also does that, all the whole series. But anyway, um, yeah, I think I maybe had tried to read this when I was younger. That's why I'm saying this. Or I had tried to read George Eliot as a teenager and just hadn't gotten it or gotten connected or something. And now it's just so, her, this book is so good. So. Middle March, I highly recommend. And then the last book I recommend, which I'm reading too, which is my nonfiction book of the moment, or one of them, is um, The Life Giving Home by Sally Clarkson. Sally and Sarah Clarkson. It's a mother and daughter, and I love both Sally and Sarah Clarkson. I love to listen to both of their podcasts. Well, actually, Sarah Clarkson doesn't have a podcast, but she has a substack, which I love to read. And here I am, about 45 minutes later, my other battery died. I guess I didn't charge them all the way, so I took a little break, read some Middle March on the balcony, and now I'm back again. <laughs> but I was just talking about books and what I'm enjoying. Life Giving Home has been such a good book and so inspirational for me, and looking at my life and my home and homemaking in whatever form that takes for me in the seasons of my life um, in a new and really intentional way, um, looking at the meaning and value of the small moments um, that we create, you know, in our home life, the rituals we make for ourselves, whether you are, you know, single, living alone, whether you um, live with extended family, whether you're in a multi-generational home, with, whether you have a little family of your own, the rituals you create just have the potential to be so formative and life-giving to everyone who's around or just to you and so I really loved that book and I could highly recommend that book to anyone and everyone I think it's amazing um, and I've loved it and we've also been reading poetry the girls and I read the trumpet of the trumpeter of the swan what is it the, the trumpet of the swan I don't know why I say the trumpeter but the trumpet of the swan by E.B. White which is so good last year we read Charlotte's Web which I've wanted to read again, but I don't know. I think we're not going to... We have just so many books on our list. Probably it's going to have to wait for next year. Um, we read Winnie the Pooh. We're almost done with um, House on Pooh's Corner, I think is the name of the second book. I'm so bad with titles, I guess, today. But the next Winnie the Pooh book and the final one, because there's just two. And I didn't know if my girls would like Winnie the Pooh, the real books, but both of them, especially Esmeralda, my four-year-old, but both of them, also Vivian, who's two, have just absolutely loved Winnie the Pooh. And Winnie the Pooh and the Hundred Acre Wood have made it into their imagination and their play in such sweet, wonderful ways. And I just love that. I love the way that literature kind of lights up life and lights up 
perception of life, especially for little children. So um, we've really, really enjoyed that and have been reading a lot of poetry and just enjoying the summer so much. And before I say goodbye to you, because I kept you long enough anyway, I thought that I would just tell you a little bit about my plans for this channel and this podcast, because it's been a while, and I think the last two years or so I've been pretty, you know, pretty much just sharing a podcast episode whenever it suits, whenever it fits the rhythm of my life and my making, whenever I have something to share or I just feel like catching up. Um, but the first couple of years after making this channel and starting the podcast, probably 2020 through 2021, um, I was really consistent with having a podcast. I had almost like a schedule of a podcast where I made one every two weeks, two, sometimes every week, a different kind of video. Like I just really was consistent in that time. And then the last two years since having my daughter Vivian, it's been more of a flow of just kind of popping on whenever I feel like saying hello. And I have reflected on that a little bit because I'm someone who likes to be reliable in a way. I, I like to show up and I have not been able to do that in the way I used to be able to. First of all, before having children, but also before having my second child, I feel like, you know, I drop balls in different directions or I have priorities which have shifted um, in different ways. So it's hard for me when I feel like, for myself, even in my own mind, I'm not showing up to something that I want to. And I really value consistency and I really value those different things. So it feels sometimes like, oh, I feel a little disappointed in myself for not being consistent to something that I kind of imagine I want to be. I'm consistent with or show up to in a way. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm sure you understand what I mean. Um, but I just thought about maybe for myself, but also for you, because I know some of you have been returning viewers and have been so kind to just continue to chat with me and been, be in communication with me, just even in the comments or in different ways um, over the months and even the years of me being here on YouTube. And so, um, yeah, just my relationships with you just really mean a lot to me and the connection that we have with our making and our lives and I just feel like we're really kindred spirits so um, I don't like to just not show up for my friends if that makes sense so I, I've thought about it a lot and I do think that I, I really love to make podcasts and I think probably it will continue pretty much just like it has been for the last couple of years but I want to, I want to kind of venture out into saying at least a seasonal episode will come from me, at least a seasonal update, just for myself, so that I know at least once a season I'm going to be popping in with a podcast. And perhaps more if, you know, more often if there are really like a lot of things I'm making or a lot of things I want to share. And But what I'm also hoping to do, um, this is something I've just been thinking about and has been kind of brewing in me in the last, yeah, since I last spoke to you. Um, is that I would love to just extend my, the conversation beyond just podcast episodes um, because I feel like there's lots that I am inspired by and I love this format. I love this chat, this sitting here, talking about projects, making the details. Um, I feel like when I watch knitting podcasts, I just love it. It's like maker to maker. There's so much goodness that comes in talking about what we're making and what we're using and the techniques we're learning and our experiences knitting. Um, and I want to continue that in my podcast episodes. But I also think there's so much that I love to think about and talk about in terms of like more perspectives on life and handmaking and artistry. And so I think that as I continue seasonally podcasting or more or less often, probably more often than that, but you know, at least seasonally, I really want to maybe, you know, also have a couple of videos or video series exploring some thoughts I've had and ideas I've had with handmaking. Um, it's value for us now in our modern era, in the modern culture, the meaning it has, um, you know, integrating artistry in our daily lives through handcrafts, through handmaking. Um, those are the kinds of things that I really love to talk about and think about. So probably I will also come out with a few little knit and chats or just chatty videos or video series on those topics um, in the next few months. Um, but yeah, I, I tend to also not give updates like what I'm doing or like what you can expect because I feel like for me this is just really an organic place to show up and I just love connecting with you and um, it's it's a pretty low pressure, just really joyful, joyful experience for me to podcast and share this way. But um, I 
like I said, I just want to give kind of a little bit of a expectation of what you can expect from me and um, there's so many good things to watch and see and hear and listen to and read and I mean just to sit in, in nature and hear, hear the birds chirping is already good enough so it means so much to me that you choose and if you've chosen today to sit with me in my little home and talk to me and listen to me talk about, I mean listen to me talk this whole time about making and crafting and life. Um, it means so much to me that you've been here and thank you so much for just joining me. I'd love to hear about what you're up to, what you're making, what you're doing, what you're thinking about, um, what you're reading, if you've also been reading lately or listening to, if you have audiobooks you've been liking to listen to too, I'd love to hear if you have any recommendations for me. I've gotten some great recommendations before in the comments which I've loved um, enjoying and reading and listen, or listening to. But anyway, thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your August, whether it be cool or warm where you are. Um, and I can't wait to see you again next time. Take care. Bye.